There is no one more misunderstood than the Holy Spirit. So I want to show you what the Holy Spirit is really like by showing you nine attributes of the Holy Spirit. Before I begin, if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell when you do. That's very important. When you click that notification bell, you'll begin to receive notices whenever we release new content, and you can always follow us wherever you're watching us. So what is the Holy Spirit like? Psalm chapter 103 verse 7 says this, He made known His ways unto Moses, His acts unto the children of Israel. You see, it's one thing to know someone's actions. It's another thing entirely to know their nature. We know the Holy Spirit performs miracles. We know the Holy Spirit empowers us with spiritual gifts. We know the Holy Spirit gives us boldness for evangelism. But what is His nature like? What is He as a person like? Well, to discover this, we must look to the Scripture. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23 say this, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So, if the Holy Spirit can give this, if the Holy Spirit can produce this in our lives, then that means that the fruit of the Spirit is of His nature. It comes from who He is. Therefore, Every fruit of the Spirit is actually a description of an attribute of the Holy Spirit. So number one, He's loving. You've heard it said, Jesus loves you. You've heard it taught, the Father loves you. But consider also that the Holy Spirit loves you. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who produces that love in our hearts for God and for people, thus giving us everything that we need to fulfill God's commands. He's loving. And in loving you, He is passionate. In loving you, He is selfless. In loving you, He reveals a side to His nature, just as the Son loves you and just as the Father loves you, so the Holy Spirit loves you. So start saying that too. The Holy Spirit loves me. The Holy Spirit loves you. Number two, He's joyful. We often imagine that the Holy Spirit is serious and stoic and very dry or even somewhat mean. Maybe He lacks a sense of humor. But really, the Bible makes it clear and the experiences that we have with the Holy Spirit make it clear that the Holy Spirit does indeed have a sense of humor. I think of 1 Samuel chapter 19, verses 19 through 23, where the Holy Spirit caused the enemies of David to begin to prophesy when they didn't want to speak well of David. So in that, I think that the Holy Spirit demonstrated to us his joyful side, his sense of humor. The Holy Spirit produces this joy in our hearts. And those who are truly spiritual, those who are friends of the Holy Spirit, walk with this joy. Now, I'm not talking about a personality type. Some people are quiet. Some people are a little more serious. Some people are a little more reserved. And that's perfectly fine. I'm talking about a joy that is genuine. And it comes from the Holy Spirit because He Himself is joyful. He is the joyful Spirit. The Scripture describes that we have righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Number three, the Holy Spirit is peaceful. You will never sense the Holy Spirit panic. You will never sense the Holy Spirit worrying. I can tell you on several occasions that when I sensed panic arising in me, when I began to worry about something that I imagined to be a calamity, when I began to fret about the future, in all those instances, I was able to sense the Holy Spirit calming me, causing me to walk in that peace. And you know, because He is peaceful, He can give us that peace. And those who are friends of the Spirit walk in that divine confidence, knowing that He is at peace so you can be at peace. Number four, the Holy Spirit is patient. The Holy Spirit doesn't abandon us when we fail. 
He's more patient than we are flawed. He's more patient than we are sinful. I think that sometimes we imagine that the Holy Spirit is just waiting to cut us off, that we're hanging by a thread, that His patience is worn thin, that the next mistake, that the next act of sin will be the final one that does us in. Now, of course, we should avoid sin. Of course, we should walk in holiness. But you must understand that the Holy Spirit isn't going to abandon you just because you make a mistake. The Holy Spirit isn't going to cut you off just because you're flawed. In fact, the scripture says in John 14, verse 16, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. God keeps to his same standards that he gives to us. Why would God ask us to be forgiving and then be unforgiving? Why would God ask us to be loving and then himself be unloving? Why would he ask us to be patient and then himself be impatient? He wouldn't do it. So the Holy Spirit is going to forgive. The Holy Spirit is going to abide. The Holy Spirit is going to remain patiently with you. He abides with you. He remains with you. Convicting you of your sin, yes. Correcting your sin, yes. But gently, lovingly, patiently abiding. Number five, he's kind. The Holy Spirit doesn't tear you down. I think sometimes that we confuse our own thoughts or even the accusations of the enemy for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we're bombarded with accusations concerning the past. Sometimes we're frustrated with our own flaws. And sometimes even if it becomes unhealthy, we move into self-hatred. But the Holy Spirit is not the accuser. Yes, the Holy Spirit will point out flaws, but He does so with the aim to correct those flaws. He never does so with the aim to shame you. So sometimes we beat ourselves up. Sometimes we allow allow the accusation of the enemy to enter into our minds and then into our hearts, and we become overcome with shame. We become governed by guilt, and that burden can be broken when we realize that the Holy Spirit is kind. Don't mistake your self-hatred for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Don't mistake the accusations of the enemy for the voice of the Holy Spirit. He is kind. This doesn't mean he'll never correct you. This doesn't mean he'll never call you on your sin. This just means that when he does so, he does so patiently and he does so with kindness. Number six, he's good. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 20 says, You sent your good spirit to instruct them. And you did not stop giving them manna from heaven or water for their thirst. The scripture here describes the Holy Spirit as the good spirit. There is nothing defiled about the nature of the Holy Spirit. He is divine. He is pure. He is not just good. He is goodness itself. His every action and aspect arises from the intrinsic goodness of God. He is not just good. He is goodness itself. Number seven, he's faithful. He can be counted on to fulfill his tasks. John chapter 14, verse 26 says, But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. He reminds you of the things of God. He faithfully reveals the truth. You can count on the Holy Spirit to do that which the Scripture says He will do. As you go about your day, He calls your attention to devotion to the Word and prayer. In the moments where the flesh arises, maybe some moment of anger, the Holy Spirit is there faithful to be present in that moment. He's dependable. He can be counted upon. He is consistent. Micah 2.7 says, O thou that art named the house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord straightened? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? Is the spirit of the Lord straightened? This means, can you cause him to change his mind? No, he's faithful. He is diligent. He is focused. He is faithfully confrontational. Sometimes the Holy Spirit does confront us with things, and He's faithful to do that. He's faithful to encourage. He's faithful to empower. He's faithful to embolden. 
Now, the Holy Spirit isn't pushy, but he is pervasive, meaning he is consistently there filling in all of those gaps where we lack. He doesn't speak loudly, but he speaks consistently, faithfully. That's the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit. You can't get him to change your mind. I think sometimes we imagine that if we pray and we beg enough that we're going to get the Holy Spirit to change the instruction that he gave us, not so. The Holy Spirit will persist faithfully. The Holy Spirit's love is stronger than anyone's pride. He is more persistent than we are stubborn. He faithfully pursues us. The Holy Spirit doesn't take no for an answer, at least not from those who belong to him. You can't convince him to do it your way. Believe me, he's stronger than you, more patient than you, and more committed than you. You might as well just do it his way. Which leads to the eighth point. He's in control. There's nothing outside of the control of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit doesn't lack in self-control. We need self-control, and he's able to give that self-control because he himself is in control. He knows what he's doing, you can trust him. Number nine, he's gentle. Now, people often miss his voice because he doesn't shout, he whispers. The Holy Spirit doesn't shout often, I should say. He most often whispers. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. As I mentioned earlier, he's classy, not chaotic. He's a gentleman in that he will approach you, whisper instruction to you, whisper commands to you, faithfully speak those things to your heart, and then it's on you to respond. We must obey that gentle nudge from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can be ignored and overlooked if we're not careful, and that's a frightening thought. Because the Holy Spirit arrives as a rushing wind, but He leaves as a whispered breath. He has an announced arrival, but a discreet departure. His coming draws attention His leaving often goes unnoticed. Now, I'm not saying here that the Holy Spirit will leave the believer. I'm talking about the influence of the manifestation of His power and presence. He is always present, but the manifestation of that presence is not always apparent because we go to ignoring Him. So, the Holy Spirit is loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good, faithful, in control, and gentle. I want to pray with you now. I want to ask that the Holy Spirit would continue to reveal His nature to you, that you might draw closer to Him. Ask Him to draw you closer right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that one receiving this now. Lord, they want a friendship with the Holy Spirit, and they want to know Him more. They want to honor Your Holy Spirit. They want to love Your Holy Spirit. They want to be like your Holy Spirit. So, Father, I pray that from the nature of the Spirit, that fruit would be produced in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, Amen. Well, that is it for the message. Here now is a question for conversation. What attribute of the Holy Spirit is God revealing to you most in this season of your life? Let me know in the comment section. Now, here are some comments from a previous video titled, The Power of Covenant Partnership with God Almighty. On that video, Rubenia Japutra wrote, Thank you for this message so clearly explained as always. I love to learn from the Holy Spirit's channel. God bless this ministry and worship band. Evans Ballot writes, Amen. Powerful teaching. Thank you, Brother David. Mark Nebrida writes, this is a deep revelation. I now realize that God is faithful. Thank you, Pastor David, for sharing this. Also, the worship led by Stephen was so anointed. Glory to God. Patty Hudson, our dear friend, wrote, Thank you, Jesus, for this powerful message. And thank you, Pastor David. Shalom from Australia. And the final comment I'll read from this video titled, The Power of Covenant, comes from Jesse Parisi, who writes, Thank you so much for making this video, and thank you, Jesus, for taking our place to fulfill the covenant with God. What a truth. Before you finish with this video, I want to encourage you with a small portion of Scripture. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19-21 through 21 say, 
Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. I want to encourage you to store up for yourselves treasures in heaven by giving to the gospel. Often we try to protect our future by investing in stocks and real estate. Some of us invest in cryptocurrency, and there's nothing wrong with investing in any of those things. That's good stewardship and good planning for the future if you invest in things that are material. But we also must remember the heavenly things. We also must remember the spiritual things. So I want to invite you to step out in faith, Trust God with your future. The future is bright. God is in control. You can trust Him. So give to this ministry through a one-time gift or a monthly partnership by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Help us continue doing everything that we do. The live streams, the media, the events, the Holy Spirit School. Help us do it all and more by becoming a monthly partner or giving a one-time gift be a part of what God is doing in the earth through this ministry. And as you do, you'll demonstrate that your heart is in souls because where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Give today, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Go and give a one-time gift or become a monthly supporter. I encourage you to do both. Do as the Spirit leads. Ask Him how you should give. Go and obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.